All right, so we got E7, going to F sharp, 7, A7, and then G7 to B7. B7. And uh, that's, a, that's a particular sound that Lennon's used and, and Harrison has used before as well. Play okay. just those two chords back to back. G, G to G7 G7 to B. To B. Okay. And that. then resolution, right? Yeah. All right. This positioning of a dominant seventh chord to me is so representative of blues to me okay. in relation to the key of E. Okay. Because we have a G root, and if I have an E7, I get that when I hit a G. Mm -hmm. And there's also this play, uh, again, when we come out of this whole mess of sevenths. Instead of going back to E7, he goes to E minor. Now this is what, this is a line that's very standard in jazz, and you called it kind of secret agent music. Um, and unfortunately, it has only been associated with that, but it's a great line, and it could be used for a lot of stuff. Okay. It's also, when you reverse it, well, when you extend it one note and then reverse it, it becomes that same blues line. Oh, okay. All right. I'll show you. We're going E minor. Now, one way to justify the line, not justify it, but to really highlight it is, instead of changing chords, I'm just going to move the line. All right. Mm-hmm. There's a rattle in this guitar lately. I think one of the... Uh, you dropped a pick or something. <laughs> no, I wish that was the case, but I think one of these... Something is loose. I don't know if you hear it, but something is kind of... I can, I can hear it and feel it. Alright, uh, so anyway. Um, but what, in order to create the line, you can either just keep the line independent of the chord and just let it play. And there's your secret agent stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because, you know... Um, in the early James Bond movies, they had that stuff, and then Johnny Rivers came and wrote Secret Agent Man, right. and he took that and made it a line. Alright, unfortunately though, this can be used in a lot of cool um, jazz references, and it has been done, but whenever people hear it, they always go, it sounds like Secret Agent Man. Oh, you know? yeah. Now, what he did instead of keeping the line independent was he justified it more with chording. He, he went... And for the C note, he said, well, I'll hit a C chord. And then for the C sharp, he said, I'll bring that to an A7. And then back to a C. Okay. <coughs> but what he did, which uh, isn't completely kosher to me as a, as a real movement, is he went from C to C major 7. That, to me, is kind of weak chord yeah. movement. Because they're both C chords, they're both C major chords. It's just one has a little bit, you know, suddenly has a bow tie on when it didn't a second ago, mm -hmm. you know. So he goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he changed that C to C major seven, and then again the play between relative major and minor. He resolves it to G. All right. So what's that about? Well, how come we're resolving to G major when we were in E root, right? E seven mm -hmm. root. Um, again, this is, this is a long walk, but every key has a relative major and minor component, and you can think of the relative minor as the little sister of the relative major. So, what, remember I told you he went B7 to E minor, right. and then went through that string of things, and then resolves to G. Now, it works very nicely, right? It, right. We're in G, and we don't know how we got there. Yeah. How we got there was that E minor itself, when we establish the key of E minor, it is the relative minor of the key of G. Okay. So we're literally setting up, now we're literally changing keys altogether to the key of G. E minor and G, um, and C. C is the four chord of G right. when that comes in. And when you make it major seven, that even kind of more so says we're in the key of G. Okay. All right. Um, so the E minor is relative minor to G major. That's how he tricked us into getting there. Okay. See, the B7 could have taken this to E7, but instead, the classical resolution, he goes to minor. Now, our ears have, that's where our ears change, all right? That's where it goes, 
Well, we have the root, but it sounds sadder now. It sounds more serious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, temporary key change to G. And then we go right back into... Okay. You know, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah. go, from, go from the G to the E again. The from, G to from the, the ending G. Oh, right, right. and how it resolves back to E7? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, C major 7. Now we resolve G. Now. Okay. He, he just tosses it in. It works. It works. <laughs> yeah. It works. That's one, you know, one cheat you could use in music all the time if you want to keep create changes is a uh, key change is just simply create a silence oh. and go somewhere else. Yeah. He goes he he, he radically states here we're in G by, by pounding on the G yeah. as an accent. Silence. Oh. Now we can move somewhere else. Oh. I mean I could have gone to an A flat chord. That would have been really weird. Yeah. This will sound strange. That's why I wanted to go somewhere else. Oh, All right, yeah. so that's bad, but uh, oh. but there are some chords you can. That was a really crappy example. But there are some chords that you can actually just su suddenly jump to if you want to. Oh, okay. And even the A flat, you know, if you if you do things rightfully, you can get away with that. Even okay. you'd have to kind of sinuously work your way to it. But there's a way to get to it. <laughs> Using an invidious composer. <laughs> Maybe I was thinking of E flat. I can start a new section on an E flat. We have suddenly have this bright sound coming in. Yeah. All right. It's the silence that gives us the space to change a person's sense of where is root. Okay. So that's a, that's an easy cheat for. Uh, it's not used that often. Just using a silence to suddenly modulate. You know. Mm -hmm. And it is a cheesy way because it's kind of like. Surprise! <laughs> here we are. How'd you get here? Hello. Oh, okay. How did you guys keep this quiet? All right. So now we have the bridge. Um, so we have an E minor, A7, a suspended A7, relaxed back to the A7, then G, B7. Clearly. He really liked the sound of G to B7, like it was a new discovery for him. Okay. And so he has it in the verse, right? Uh, and here it comes, G to B7. G to B7, right? And then in the chorus he has G to B7, right? a common tone in the melody. That B note is the third of G and the third of B7. Right? Alright, so um, that's a that's an interesting little trick to use at any given time in your comp composing. Uh, just a quick side note, and this is for you personally. Uh, up in the upper uh, portion, you could work with these shapes. There are three major shapes and three minor shapes, okay? Using, like, D as our our f starter shape, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we have a D shape. Now, now we're just going to play these three strings, okay? We're not going to play the lowers. Okay. But we have a D shape, an F shape, but we're only going to use three strings, so an F comes here, but we could move these around, okay? okay? So we have a D shape, an F shape, and then what comes out of the the B bar chord, a B shape. Okay. Now these letter names are not really good to use. Okay. Just to let you know, the three inversions. Here's the root inversion because the root is in the bass. This is the lowest note we're hitting. Okay. Right. First inversion is when the third is in the bass. All right. And second inversion is when the fifth is in the bass. Now in that case, I played all Bs. Okay. Three different inversions. But the point is, you could use these shapes to target a note. All right? So in the case of Harrison, he went... He had two chords against these, this, this um, repeated note. 
First was G, second was B. Okay. All right. Now you could use that technique. If his melody was was different, it was a D, he'd have to do something else. All right. Now what I did was I I took the D note as the root, and then I took uh, I took it as the fifth of the G chord. And then I took it as a third in a B flat chord and I made a seventh. Alright. Okay. And you could go even further and, and I just did root third. This D is root, this D is third, this D is fifth. Are you following this? Is this making kind sense? Kind of am, yeah. Kind of am? Yeah. Alright. In other words, a chord has three components a root, a third, and a fifth. Right. And that D can be either in the root position of some chord. Or in the third or in the fifth. Right. So, and of course, the root position would be D. It's a D chord. Right. Like when, when you root, it's D in a, in, a, in a chord, it's D. But again, we're only talking about three notes here. Three chords, three chords and one note. Three note chords, right. Right. Three note chords, triads. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go into four notes, as I was about to say, then you, you get. <laughs> Interesting, because this could be the seventh of some chord, which would be E7. Okay. Right? Um, uh, let me see. Also, bear in mind that you would have th three minor chords as well as choices. Right? Does that make sense? So I yeah. have D minor, D root. Right? And then where D is the third, okay. B minor. And where D is the fifth, uh, Oh my God! I have to think for a second. Uh, G minor, G minor. Right. Okay. All right. So this is a composer's tool. You have a note and you want to create a surprise. Find that note in a different position in a chord: root, third, fifth, seventh. And when you get better and better at it, you can use ninth and thirteenth oh, as okay. well. Um, you know, to get more of it. That'll give you more jazzy kind of like, oh, how did I get here? Uh -huh. Okay. Um, all right, so now, uh, so we have the bridge, we have E minor, A7, then we suspend it and unsuspend it, and he does it again because he likes it. That's an A7 suspended? Yeah. Fourth? Yeah, see, see now, minor, we've, we've created a minor situation, all right? I've talked about minor before. I won't go into it in depth, but you can get away with so much in minor keys. Yeah. All right, because in classical music they tweak the shape of these minor keys, so we have like a whole string of chromatic notes that you're allowed to get away with in a minor key. Okay. That's why you get this. That's chromatic. And I could, I could, you know, you've heard plenty of songs that go like this. that line in a minor key. Right. And you could go now that one step higher. And you could start on the root and go even one step higher, right? Mm -hmm. was all that. Yeah. I had a line. This is the opposite of what we were talking about before. In the other situation we had one note, we're moving chords all around that note as right. it stays still. Here, I created this line in a minor key. This is hard to do in a major key, but you can get away with it in a minor yeah, key. Yeah, okay. Um, e minor, my top note, and then I went to B7 to get a half step lower. Alright, so here's E minor, B7, then I went to D as my choice, then I went to A7, then to C, then back to B7, which very nicely resolves me back to E minor or major, you want the Picardy third sound, right? Um, a Hotel California does this in spades. Okay? Okay. I hate the song and I hate the Eagles, but yeah, right. 
Uh, <laughs> I should never well announce known. that. I just made a huge mistake. I live in California, and there's two things you don't say. You don't say you hate the song Hotel California, and you don't say you hate the Doors. I made the mistake of saying I, I don't like Stevie Ray Vaughan's attempts at jazz when I was teaching in Austin. Bad thing to do. <laughs> He's a god there, huh? <laughs> Yeah, have you been to Austin at all? Ever? No. Yeah, if you go to like their park, you know, like other cities, they have a park. There's some like, you know, war hero statue or something. There they have Stevie Ray. Vaughan. Stevie Ray. <laughs> well, you know, keep Austin weird. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Let's see if I could find it. Let me see. Hearing it? Mm-hmm. That's a nice long line that they put in that song. It's almost the vocal line, isn't it? No, it isn't. Sorry. No, not really. Very, 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 that's actually very nice, you know. Yeah. Um, song still sucks, but that's very nice. <laughs> you know. All right, I think we're going to have to come to a close here today. I think we covered everything. Yeah, you so know. We, we today uh, managed with uh, Savoy Truffle and exercise in sevenths and composition and line and all sorts of things. So thank yeah. you, Mr. Kajian. Great pleasure.